to, to rephrase your question, uh, it might be, Bruce, what are, what are different categories or types of, of analytics you've seen? I mean, analytics is an old term. I mean, I, I remember looking at a, 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 a solution called the Executive Information Solution back in 1998. And oh my gosh, it was so cool because uh, what they would do is at the end of every day, they would take all the financial numbers for the day, the week, the month, all summed up, and they'd spool them off onto its own separate PC, really, in those days, and it would crunch all night long. So the executive, the guy in the corner office, could come in in the morning and play all these what-off games. They could look at 750 different charts, pie graphs, you name it. They had sliced and diced these numbers 62,000 ways, and what it really was was gotcha, on steroids. <laughs> you know, this fun guy was explaining, yeah, it was really cool. I, I, was, I pulled up our top 10 slowest, biggest deadbeat customers. So I'm not looking at who's past 60 days, nickels and dimes, a big thing. I'm just saying, I want to know, you know, on a weighted basis, who owes us the most money the furthest out on a ranked basis. So, so I'm looking at this list. I sent an email to the credit manager saying, what are you doing about these guys? And he shows up at my office about a half hour later and he said, uh, I call them every week. And you know, this particular guy, do you remember nine months ago when you said, no, no, he's good, go ahead and sell them open. I said, no, leopards don't change their spots. Well, how do you suggest we get you know, blood out of this, this rock, this turnip, whatever type of thing? And he realized, he said, you know, all these financial numbers, I've got them all over my business. I've given all my departmental guys, they're here, your departmental costs, keep them down. I've, I've taken industry standard numbers and put them in here and said, here's you, here's the industry best, close the gap, which is to say try harder. So I guess, you know what, they're trying harder every day. I mean, how much harder can they try? It, it's not, it's just, frankly, it's upsetting people. It's not, I, I, we, we have no in, new insights. And then that's what I was sort of explaining. I said, well, you know, financial numbers are ultimate downstream symptoms of lots of upstream contributors. Ideally, you want to find root causes upstream and get insights and manage those, and then happily, the financial numbers get better. Often for a lot of hidden sort of systematic feedback, positive loop kind of things that you're not going to see in financial numbers. Financial numbers are to pay your taxes on time and let the bank seize your assets if you can't pay the debt. That's all they exist for. So it's, it's very, you know, it takes a lot of innovation to come up with analytics that work for your business. Now, if I said le levels of the game, most, most analytic packages that you buy, if you are not doing any internal cost to serve modeling, in other words, it what's it take to do this activity or this service process, all you have is financial numbers and symptom symptoms crank 10,000 ways. Symptoms combated by symptoms, it's not gonna give you any insights, it's just gotcha, try harder. All right, no insights. Now some people have said, well, we've, we've done customer profitability analysis. We've taken margin dollar and we said, what's the cost of taking care of the customer? And that gives us profit on a customer basis. And I put those people into two categories. Did that, it blew up, we had a big best customer at the bottom, nobody wanted to look at it, we put our head back in the, in the, in the sand, we hope the problem goes away. There are other people that have said, well, we'd like to do something about it, but we don't know what to do about it. We go out to a big losing customer and we say, you're killing us with small orders. And they're going, tough. And we go, well, okay, <laughs> we, we don't know what else to say. So the next level down, the one where you can really have win-win conversations would be line item profit analytics. And you can't have this unless you do your own cost to serve models for every single line item event in your business. If it's a direct order, it's a different cost to serve path and if it's a cash and carry at the counter or whatever. So it gets involved to do these models, but you can outsource that to Waypoint, for example. That they just, that's all they do. They just do this for hundreds and hundreds of distributors, so they've seen the movie. The, and then what happens is, when you have the line item profit analytics, you can roll it up in a lot of different ways, but you have to have a theory about where you're going with this, and Waypoint's really good at that. So now what happens is when you look at your biggest losing customer, you can also look at all the SKUs they bought from the most profitable one down to the biggest loser. And the biggest loser is because it's an emergency order on one little widget every week. It's a systematic, what is going on problem. And when you go out and ask the buyer, they don't know, it's between the silos. 
So when you go out and you do an audit, you find what's going on, it turns out that there's some, something happened long, long ago, or they just, no one's talking about it, and it's just, it's there killing both parties. So when you can go out and use the customer's own data and their own buying activity and say, these are my costs, and yours have to mirror mine, more or less, cosmic law of the universe. If I'm on the phone, you got somebody on the phone, they're not for free. We got paper, you got paper. You know, if we got a rush order, you got downtime. And they go, oh, what can I say? This is, this is my data. This makes sense. So yes, we can continue to talk about the product and giving a, an extra one or two percent on the price. Not either or, but and also we could talk about the five, ten, twenty, thirty percent of your spend that's hidden noise waste that's killing us both. There's no bad guy here. It's just the way it grew up. So if you have that kind of stuff, then you can actually go out and turn lead into gold. I mean, you can, you can turn a lose-lose situation to win-win. They'll give you 20 30% more. You can do the same thing with your most profitable customers because even your most profitable customers, when you look at the MRI you know, picture that you can get with the, the, with the Waypoint Analytics, uh, different views of the customer, you can say, well, wait a minute. They do have these four items. That they're buying all the time on a, a losing basis. Why are they buying them so frequently in small quantities? They really ought to buy a pack of four once a month instead of once, once every week kind of thing. So when you go out to do your audit for your best customers, you even know where to go look and some of the questions to ask in advance. So um, with that level of detail, you, you, you open up a whole new universe that you can find really unmeasured, and therefore it didn't exist, hidden waste or noise in the system that's killing both parties. So those would be my... my now. I could even sort of go further and say, you know, to actually make a lot of these wonderful solutions work, you've got to get all the employees engaged. Because they're going to say, well, that's nice, but I just want to do what I'm doing, and for what you're paying me, I really don't care. And, you know, you want me to change and do all this stuff, so what, you can get richer. And this is where you say, you know what, I'm going to cut you into the action. Because there's so much upside, why don't we give 10% of the employees anyway? If we want to attract and keep better people and keep them turned on, that might help. So the ability to kind of go open book, which you wouldn't want to do if you don't have a strategy on how to be smarter and better, you're going to say, we're going to open book, we're, we're, we're not making any money, and we have no ideas except try harder, and the best way to make money is to pay you less and work you harder. This is just not going to get a lot of people excited. So you, you, you have to have you know, a, a, a sort of a, a new low-hanging fruit, a new vein of gold to go after, and then you can get them all going out there with their picks and shovels, and you can get it, get it going. So it allows you to create a, a much more of a high-performance, engaged environment that allows you to then uh, continue to grow, buy other pe people, turn them around, whatever you want. So those are the levels of the game. Hi, Bruce Merrifield again. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, then we have more to share with you. Uh, and the way you can do that is to head over to the APIC conference. Uh, so it's apicconference2cs.com slash profit and sign up for our Innovative Profit Tips series. It's a good collection of materials, all designed to show you how to drive more revenue in the distribution sector without having to increase your sales, although they may go up. Uh, or you can simply text your name and email address to Here's the number, write it down, 480-207-3433, and we'll get you started right away.